Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to BMMP4553 Sheet Metal Technology and this is our lecture 9 and I'll be discussing the topic on forging now although forging if you understand uh, in general the process uh, doesn't necessarily mean that we deal with uh, sheet metal per se but although you learn about the principles the process and the machines that involve in forging because uh, forging can also um, because you, if you remember uh, the early definition when we, call, we talk about sheet metals is about 0.3 millimeter to about 6 millimeter uh, uh, in uh, the, 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 the category of uh, when we call it as sheet metal so even though forging uh, deals with uh, the initial uh, workpiece uh, exceeds that dimension but some of the process that used uh, and that used for uh, forging can be applied to a uh, sheet metal process. So basically, uh, forging is you using a compressive force with a blank with a workpiece and involve the uh, a die and the, the the compression is the using a, a an a hammer type or even a a, a punch. Okay, so the basically you deform uh, using a die with a, with a compression force. So it is a process in which the workpiece is shaped by compressive force. Okay, as I mentioned just now, uh, applied through various dies and tools. Okay, and it's also one of the oldest uh, metalworking operation. Okay, we can date it back to the earliest civilizations uh, during the early on uh, when humans uh, deal, dealt with uh, non-ferrous metal during the uh, uh, Bronze Age. Okay, and then going to the and uh, then moving on to the Iron Age. Okay, so we dealt with this uh, forging. Okay, we've already dealt with the, this forging process. And simple, simple forging operations can be performed using a heavy hammer and hammer okay and usually traditionally done by blacksmith um, so for uh, for steel uh, it is uh, when we use forging for example if you uh, trying to produce a steel sword the steel sword is much stronger forged as, as opposed to cast okay because cast you you have a high um, carbon content and you have to make it easy to to be uh, flow to be it has to have a very high castability uh, 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 pro, uh, castability characteristic uh, for it to flow so but uh, in, in forging you don't need that that characteristic so most forging require a set of dies and a press or a forging hammer okay usually it requires this uh, these tools that uh, complete the forging process and it, you can it, you can not only can you produce uh, simple products or simple parts, but you can also produce discrete parts. Okay, with uh, for example gears, okay, you can also use use uh, forging process. And typical forged products are bolts and rivets, uh, connecting rods, even shafts, okay, for turbines, gears, uh, hand tools like hammers, uh, even ha aircraft components are manufactured can be manufactured using forging. So this is an example, okay, when we are uh, trying to do a bevel gear with a shaft, okay, so it starts with a blocker, when then you finish it, afterwards you near net, and the, the gears are uh, forged, okay, using, uh, using a forging process, okay, and another example is a landing gear for an aircraft that is uh, made by forging, okay. So there are reasons why uh, we use uh, forging. Okay, we, we can actually use even uh, casting or we can use uh, machining. But in the case, of, for example, if you want to machine, you, you'll be wasting a lot of uh, materials, for example, uh, to machine according to this dimension. Although you can have a very good dimension, you can have very good uh, uh, properties of the, of the material, but you'll be wasting a lot of material. Uh, in forging, you, do, you'll be, you have significant uh, very uh, very uh, the waste will be uh, will be very much less as opposed to machining for example so what are the characteristics of project process uh, that we have 
you, you have open die which uh, are simple inexpensive dies and useful for small quantities it usually involves a, a flat a die with a, a another flat uh, hammer uh, another flat punch okay though its limitation is that uh, it's limited to simple shapes and it's difficult to hold uh, cross tolerances okay because it doesn't hold any uh, shape okay to hold uh, uh, even the sides or even the uh, top and bottom of the of the workpiece and you, you have to machine to get the final necessary shape and it has low production rate because you have to uh, uh, because you have to move to another process to uh, to get the final shape for example okay uh, and uh, it, it requires a high degree of skill because it must be continuous okay the the to get the actual uh, to deform from the workpiece to the actual uh, to almost actual uh, shape that is required another uh, forging process uh, closed die which uh, we as the name imply is that we use a, uh, so an example of uh, closed die okay uh, as i shown earlier okay for example so the workpiece fills this uh, the cavity Okay, uh, and closed die is, actually, is relatively good. Uh, have relatively good utilization of, of the material, and it uh, it, pro it provides better properties uh, as opposed to open die. Uh, very good dimensional accuracy because you already uh, uh, know uh, how much uh, the workpiece material that you want to that you need to produce the, the dimension that that you want in the, using the closed die. And its limitation is that it uh, requires high cost uh, die. Okay, for uh, for small quantities, the, the die itself is very costly, and uh, often times you have to machine to get uh, also. But as a, as opposed to an open die, uh, the closed die you won't have to machine uh, dimension uh, the the fine dimension. Uh, uh, the the amount of process is is small compared to the, uh, to open die process. A blocker type is using a low die cost and it's a high production rate. The blocker type is is uh, usually to uh, to to produce uh, small uh, parts. For example, uh, rivets or screws. Okay, so you you have a a a, a, a die so, uh, or a blocker that, that and then you have a you have the 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 parts that holds the the workpiece and then you just uh, and then you uh, force it to the blocker to to get the final shape okay and again this process also uh, requires you to have uh, machining to get its final shape and and then you uh, then uh, oftentimes it, it creates a, a very thick webs and fillers area so uh, you have to consider this uh, this design okay you, if you want to use blocker type Okay, another is conventional type uh, forging, which requires much less machine than blocker, and it uh, it, go it has good uh, high production rate and good utilization of material. Uh, the die cost is much uh, higher than a blocker type. Okay, this is the, the, the limitations it has. Another is a precision type uh, forging, so very close tolerances. Okay, you can have uh, that utilizes even close die. And oftentimes uh, you don't have to machine itself huh? because you already uh, almost a near net, um, uh, almost net shape uh, product that you want to produce. Okay, but it requires very high forces because you want to uh, uh, compress it into the the final shape. Okay, and the die are very intricate. Okay, you can you need to uh, you need to consider the uh, you know, finishing in the forging process itself, and you have to also uh, consider. Uh, tools and process to remove the the forged material from the die. Okay. Uh, so if you if we another classification if we apply uh, according to the forging operations, okay, you can have a uh, uh, cold or hot forging, and uh, as the name imply, or uh, hot or even warm forging is most common because uh, you actually uh, normally this forging process you you uh, you perform it. At the uh, uh, above the recrystallization temperature, okay. So uh, oftentimes it's about more than seven hundred degrees centigrade, okay, for normal uh, to for carbon steel, and in this way you actually increases the ductility because the 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 metal is is not melting but it's it's soft. So you uh, the the forging process the energy that you need is lower, 
and also the material is more malleable you can deform it easily okay according to the shape that you want and this is the most common uh, and as an, uh, a, a common example you if if you have you've seen a uh, process of forging uh, a sword a weapon for example so you you'll see the blacksmith uh, would heat okay the metal until it's uh, it's bright uh, sort of uh, yellow uh, orange uh, hue very the color is very uh, bright okay it shows that the the metal is very hot and then uh, the the blacksmith will bring it to the anvil and then uh, hammer it until uh, they get the, the shape or the dimension or until the thickness that they want okay and then they uh, afterwards they they put inside the, the oven again once the metal is sort of a cool down then they, they put it inside the oven again to heat it up Okay, until the temperature uh, that they uh, that they required uh, for the for it to be malleable, then bring it again to the anvil and continuing the process until they get the final dimension uh, or final shape that they want. Okay, so that's a, a common example. It's very common uh, for uh, forging process. Another is called forging. Okay, uh, as an impact also, this usually uh, below the recrystallization temperature. Okay, you uh, even. Uh, you can also forge uh, at at room temperature, okay. And this advantage, uh, uh, the the advantage is that you are actually uh, not uh, changing any of the properties of the material, okay. Because if uh, because you don't consider uh, cooling or any grain changing uh, of the material of the metal itself, so you already uh, already have the properties that you want, and you 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 uh, perform. The for the forging at uh, at uh, at room temperature even uh, an example of this for example you you you're uh, producing uh, screws or rivets okay or even small uh, uh, gears also can be used to to uh, to you to do cold forging the advantage is that uh, cold forging is very costly for very large uh, large um, products okay. Uh, so normally uh, you uh, we apply cold forging to a much uh, smaller scale or smaller dimension of the product okay uh, we can also classify uh, classify uh, forging according to uh, two uh, classification one on the basis of process as i mentioned just now either you can use open die forging or closed die forging okay just the, the difference is that the 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 shape of the die either it's a uh, you don't have any uh, shape itself is it's a, we call it an open die or you have already uh, an, a, uh, an integrated shape that you want and we define it as closed die uh, if on the basis of equipment you can have drop forging okay which is as they imply you just um, uh, let a, a hammer okay by gravity and just drop on the on the on the forged metal and though there are some uh, uh, machines uh, drop forging but normally in the uh, when we talk about industrial application normally this kind of uh, process or machine drop uh, of drop forging you is 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 sort of a, uh, a sort of an artisan work it's not really uh, being applied uh, to a large scale industrial work because uh, the the uh, the the work itself is uh, is uh, it has low production rate okay you're just using and it's very um, it is very uh, difficult to to control the machines to have a, a uniform uh, force to be controlled okay so normally uh, drop forging uh, it is not uh, because it's it's sort of a a continuation from uh, uh, the from a blacksmith uh, uh, process of hammering okay and then they they change it to a uh, uh, from trip hammer to a drop hammer so and then so this uh, uh, evolution so they uh, is, so it's not it's not a uh, just a continue of the same process but the, the drawback is that is the the force uh, cannot be controlled uniformly or evenly so so this kind of process is normally is not applied uh, in, in industrial uh, and also in this in this lecture I will not uh, uh, even to show an example okay so just having you to to just this uh, just having uh, to discuss uh, just uh, to, for you to be aware that there, there still exists some this project but normally in the industrial application it's not being used and next we have uh, power forging which consists of a uh, hammer and press forging okay you can also um, 
uh, press forging uh, the, is actually an evolution next step from uh, drop forging is that you use either hydraulics or uh, mechanical or even uh, electric okay to to produce the, the enough energy to to forge or to to press or uh, uh, bringing the the to press the punch into onto the die okay uh, next is uh, hand forging okay and this is again um, an example that you use using a normal forging process that you they often see uh, popular on the use uh, on uh, making weapons okay or using a blacksmith okay uh, this is a we call it as hand forging and finally uh, for machine forging which it involves even knuckle joint forging or even uh, screw press forging okay this uh, using a machine uh, using a machine a setup of machine forging uh, another uh, forging operations either impact or pre versus press forging so uh, for impact you use a forge hammer that applies an impact load okay as i suggested uh, as i explained for example like um, the drop forging okay or uh, this is using uh, the 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 punch itself to apply uh, impact load not to actually uh, shape okay and for uh, for a press forging you're actually applying gradual pressure and keeping that 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 force that pressure on the on the workpiece so you have two different uh, pr uh two different operations sort of uh, the the hammer is you want to apply impact load okay either uh, continuous or you want to apply it uh, gradual uh, i mean you uh, a single impact load okay but for press you actually applying gradual and and sustaining and maintaining that that amount of uh, force or pressure that you that you want on the workpiece and we have uh, types of forging dies okay we want to types of forging dies uh, there are three types uh, open die forging as i mentioned it is uh, it's just between two flat dies okay uh, and then we allowing to the metal to flow laterally okay without constraint on the sides okay uh, the the top meaning that the when we when we refer to lateral okay uh, it's just that this uh, the flat die okay and the work piece can flow laterally this is what it means okay can flow laterally next is a impression die or closed die okay closed die we also is also known as impression die for forging which is the die service contain a cavity or impression that is imparted to the workpiece okay so you can have um, for example this shape okay and the shape so the force is uh, compressed and the workpiece takes the shape of the of the die itself okay and you, you and then the the amount of uh, flash okay on the sides here is uh, minimal because you already uh, calculated you already know how much uh, how much uh, the volume of the material that you need to produce the shape that you want okay so it's much uh, the dimension is more accurate as com as opposed to an open die forging next is uh, using a flashless forging or precision forging which is the work part is completely constrained in the die and you have no excess flash okay so this is much more and the die is much more uh, expensive because you you really want to uh, have a near net uh, shape of the of your of your die so it's just a, a, a continuation or an evolution of the uh, impression die forging yeah uh, the difference is that you have uh, uh, you have very uh, precise uh, how how much volume that you want to to fill and you already can see the, the expansion of the material either uh, during uh, during uh, if it's a it's a hot forging or you already considered uh, the 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 volume change during uh, a cold forging and usually this flash dust forging uh, uh, limited to normally uh, 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 small uh, parts and also uh, using a cold uh, forging process because it is much uh, uh, it's much better to 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 control the dimension and then you won't have any you, you don't want to uh, have so much uh, excess uh, materials okay so uh, it's not very uh, economical if you if you deal with a large uh, dimension of the workpiece itself 
for open die forging, the forging process okay, can be created by a solid work piece placed between two flat dies as we uh, discussed just now. Uh, and then other names that we can uh, they, we, they is called as upsetting or upset forging. Okay, so this is the, the diagram of of how uh, open die forging uh, uh, is is performed. Okay, you have the work piece in the middle and you have two flat dies. Okay, we call it a dies and uh, with uh, the initial height and the workpiece have an initial diameter and then the uh, when we apply force at this position at this height the the, the diameter of the workpiece changes okay expands uh, but at the same time the height is reduced okay because we have the same volume okay and then next as we apply more uh, the the pressure uh, the force onto the workpiece the height is much reduced and because of uh, friction between the workpiece and die, uh, the the dimension that the dimension itself is unchanged. Okay, for with uh, at the uh, at this stage of D one, but the the sides uh, deform. Okay, uh, and we call this as barreling. Okay, because we uh, we do uh, the the between the the surface between that 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 meets between the die and the workpiece. Uh, is hope being held by friction force, but the material is flowing uh, on the sides itself. Okay, to to compensate for the uh, the the to uh, because the, to the compensate of the deformation itself. Uh, I mentioned just now. Okay, the solid cylindrical billet. Okay, is offset space between the two flat dies, and then uniform deformation initially without any friction. And finally, the deformation with uh, friction. Okay, so this barreling of the billet is caused by the friction forces between at the at the billet here. Okay, this the surface area between the workpiece and the die. Uh, when we do open die forging, we can actually calculate how much uh, the or estimate itself how much forging force being applied. Okay, and the formula uh, for the uh, open die forging is. Uh, equals to y which is the flow stress or the true stress okay and we we can we can know this true stress value when we apply uh, when we do uh, st uh, tensile testing okay we, we can know uh, the the actual stress okay of the uh, of the of the material and pi okay is because of the uh, pi r squared is to calculate the area okay of the of the workpiece and times one plus uh, plus uh, times uh, two mu r, which is the coefficient of friction between the piece and the die, okay, over three h uh, three and h is the height, and r is the radius of the workpiece, okay. So, so an example here, if you have a uh, solid cylindrical uh, slug of workpiece made from three or four stainless steel, which is one hundred fifty mm in diameter. And 100 mm uh, high near the height, so it is reduced in height by 50%. Okay, at room temperature, okay, which is a cold forging, by using an open die with flat dies, and assuming that the coefficient of friction, okay, if it's known of 0.2 between the die and the workpiece, so calculate the forging force at the end of the stroke. Okay, so we know that uh, from the equation, okay, so we want to, the height is reduced. Okay, 50%. So, uh, from the initial height here at 100 millimeter, we divide by two, which is 50 millimeter, and the final radius R is determined from the volume constancy by equating the volumes before and after the deformation. Okay, so because the volume of the workpiece is still is still the same, we don't actually uh, remove any material. Okay, the forging is that we with the volume we maintain. So we can we can know the the radius the final radius if we equate the same uh, we have so this is will be the initial volume and equals to the final volume okay so uh, if we have the uh, and since we know the 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 we know the radius okay which is one hundred fifty millimeter is being mentioned just now so we we can know the diameter okay so the, from there we can uh, calculate okay this is the will be the initial uh, uh, initial radius okay uh, in this, uh, excuse me, initial uh, height 
and then we uh, the final radius so we can find that the uh, final radius is equal to 106 millimeter and if we want to find the true strain so the formula for true strain is ln of uh, the initial length over the final length so in this case uh, we use the, the the height okay and not the 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 length itself but we're using the height okay and it's equals to 0.69 and uh, if we have the inform uh, the information for for a true stress true strain we can actually uh, get when we do uh, tensile testing example so since we already know the material is a 304 steel and at this 0 0.69 this is the value 0.69 true strain and the, at that at that true strain point we know the 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 value of true stress is at 1000 megapascal okay so this diagram actually they we can use at different uh using different material uh, at different temperature okay uh, in this case we are using at a cold uh, forging process so we know it uh, is being performed at uh, room temperature okay <clears throat> and then from there uh, since we already know the true stress from the true strain okay and we already know that the the value of true stress is at 1000 megapascal okay so the forging force now we can calculate okay which is force equals y which is the true stress at that point of true strain okay pi r which is the final radius as we know the final radius times 1 plus k2 okay, uh, 0.2 times point uh, which is uh, the coefficient of friction the final radius over uh, three times of the height okay the the final height that you want so when so from there we when we when we calculate we find that the the force at the end of the stroke is about 45 mega newton okay, okay. so normally this kind of values actually uh, in application in the real application you, uh, th these values are already known okay so it's just that you have to uh, find the information and also know how to apply the, the uh, finding all the information needed and then also to apply in the equation next uh, done with uh, open die so next we'll move on to closed die forging uh, also known as impression die forging which the workpiece is is acquired with the shape of the die cavity while being forged between two shape dies okay so the process is that we put we put the blank workpiece onto two die with the shape and then next uh, the the stage okay in the pressure die forging okay so initially um so initially the the compressive force on the uh, on the workpiece okay with the uh, uh, the the workpiece taking the the shape of the cavity and we have a, a flash okay being uh, starting to to take shape and once we get to the final once the 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 final uh, push of the uh, final compressive of the of the of the die uh, being applied on the workpiece so you have a, a thin uh, flash uh, for, form at the uh, at the between the top and the bottom die okay so this is uh, this is what we call as the as a flash this area here as a flash and usually it's being trimmed off machined or even uh, cut off okay to remove and then this is it. Uh, the uh, the diagram shows uh, typical terminology for a for a die. Okay, you have a fillet area, you have the ribs. Uh, this we call it as a corner. Okay, and this is the trim line, which is the excess line that you want to uh, remove the from the flash. And you have uh, uh, the reparting line is the the line between the that separates between the the top die and the bottom die. Okay, and uh, this land is we call the starting of the flash. Okay, this whole material is the whole flash uh, material that's, that needs to be removed. Okay, and you have you have to also to consider uh, when when we use open die, you have to consider draft angle 
uh, to facilitate the easy removal for, of the workpiece from the die itself. So you can't actually, uh, it's difficult if you want to make a, a really 90 degrees angle because then you 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 have difficulty facilitating the removal of the workpiece from the from the die. Okay, that is basic um, uh, uh, rule when using uh, this kind of operation. Okay, even for casting, you have to have craft angle to facilitate the removal of the cast from the from the mold. Okay, and the gutter is for any access uh, to to consider if if the access is being uh, uh, too, uh, if too much uh, excess, uh, if any uh, uh, removal of the of the, so that excess material can easily be uh, uh, flow out from the from the from the area of the of the shape that you want to the cavity towards the flash area. Uh, so next, I'll be discussing about the advantages and disadvantages of the impression die forging. The advantage. Uh, when compare, if you want to machine, yeah, as I mentioned just now, you want to, if we compare to a machining process, okay, the the for the impression die forging have a higher production rate because you don't require uh, uh, a a large workpiece to to start with, okay, you you can start with a, a a finite amount of material to start with, okay, so you have lesser waste, okay, of course this is a uh, uh, this this is a common knowledge that you can you, you produce less waste when you compare it with uh, machining, because die forging your uh, impression die forging you already have the the final that you want the the almost uh, net shape the, of the of the of the of the cavity that you want to produce the 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 product, and next you have a greater strength because uh, you actually uh, impart uh, if you're doing for example a hot forging even. You can uh, when you impart the 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 force on the on the on the workpiece itself, you're actually uh, changing the 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 grain of the of the of the of the workpiece. And even if you do, uh, for example, do even coat forging, okay, you're actually uh, because of uh, you are actually forcing uh, the material to deform without any heat. So actually make uh, you're actually performing strain hardening. Okay, on uh, uh, forcing the grain to become uh, smaller. Okay, so you have a much better strength when compared to uh, machine itself. Okay. Uh, next, you have, as I mentioned just now, you have a favorable grain on trick orientation because you, you, you with the with the uh, with the compressive force, you actually uh, orientate the grain direction according to the, the the direction that you want. Okay, as opposed to uh, machining in which that you only cut. Removing the material without any, uh, you're not you're not um, you're not doing anything changing the grain uh, uh, grain orientation or grain size of the of the metal itself. Uh, what are the limitations? Okay, it's capable of cross tolerances. Okay, of course, because when compared to machining, machining you can uh, uh, with a good machining process, you can actually control uh, very tight tolerances as opposed to forging. Okay, you have to consider some. Uh, 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 a looser tolerance compared to machining. Next, uh, and then machining is required to achieve very high accuracy or feature, uh, so that you can have holes, threads, and mating so that fit with other components. Okay, but for forging, okay, all these, uh, for example, holes are very difficult to to achieve because uh, you have to have a much uh, a more intricate uh, setup of uh, punch and die. To get this, uh, whereas for machining, you can directly perform using just the same uh, machining setup with with uh, minimal change of tools. Okay. So when it, uh, as opposed to an open die forging, if you wish to calculate the or estimate the the forging force, okay, the uh, the formula is force equals k, which is a multiplying factor, times the again the true stress. Which we can find from the true strain value, and A, which is the projected area of the forging, including flash. Okay, so we can uh, calculate based on the the area of the closed die. So, so another example. Okay, if we have a flow stress of a material. Okay, we already know the true stress, which is at seven hundred megapascal. Okay, and the part has a projected area. 
basically the whole area of the pipe is about 38,000 uh, millimeter squared and, and taking the value uh, of the of the multiplying factor of 10 so what would be the forging force required to do the operation so what would be the forging force to perform the operation so we have to form the F equals K Y F and A so here we have K which is 10 and 700 micropascal is equal to 700 K Newton over millimeter squared times 38,000 millimeter okay so then we have the value goes to so when we calculate the value is equals to 200 266 mega meter okay right okay so moving on Okay, uh, for precision forging, okay, uh, or flashless forging, okay, we have a we are use uh, using special die, okay, that produce parts having uh, a greater accuracy, and little excess, okay, uh, another uh, uh, evolution of the of the impression die forging or closed die forging, okay, you have a uh, little excess, so this is very precision in 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 a sense that you already you already know. Uh, the flow of the material, what are the stress, how how the, the material uh, flows onto the cavity. So you design the cavity to get the uh, as much uh, the minimal uh, as uh, the required to to produce the part, so that you have little uh, if uh, little to no excess of material uh, during forging. Okay. Uh, so the the work part volume uh, almost equal to the, the 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 volume of the of the cavity that you want because we don't actually removing any material so the volume of your die cavity is almost equal to the work part volume that's being started with okay to have very uh, very close tolerance okay and this process control is more demanding okay you can use even uh, simulation techniques okay uh, understanding the, the the flow of your material to 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 have more accurate uh, control of your of your process and this is basically to part geometry that are simple and symmetrical okay and of course this uh, uh for a larger dimension is is very uh, it's not very economical so normally it's uh, limited to a smaller workpiece okay that's easier to control and also uh, uh that won't be very costly okay so if we compare to uh close time forging uh, versus uh, flashless uh, forging okay so yeah, for example uh, uh, this is a, uh, a, a closed uh, die forging okay so you start with the billet of, of the material okay you have the upper die and the lower die uh, uh, this is the beginning of the stroke so at the end of the stroke uh, after the uh, the upper die is uh, moved downwards upon, uh, at the at the um, and the lower die so you have the forge shape okay um, but you have the the flash which is this uh, area here okay that needs to be removed but if the for a uh, flash to forging okay this uh, billet or this the material you already calculate how much material that is needed uh, uh, when the when we deform to the uh, to the cavity of the of your die and your die is is much more accurate so once once you punch okay so you have the the final shape sorry without any require a little to a uh, minimal uh, post process so uh, you you save on the material but the the complexity of the die you have to uh, as you can see you have uh, even a, a die instead of that of the wall and the punch itself is 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 built into the to so consider the the final shape of the uh, of the of the process so uh, this kind of design process is more uh, uh, it's more accurate and it's also very demanding because you have to understand the the material property itself uh, and then uh, you have to have very uh, you have to very knowledgeable in the design of the die 
uh, so the flow of the material is very uh, you have to control so so it's, it's uh, normally it's limited to uh, to small workpiece okay or certain or even custom workpiece that require uh, uh, this require special processes okay so so it is not easily to to apply in a in an industrial uh, high scale uh, or high rate production uh, continuing with uh, upset forging or head uh, or heading process this process is used to perform heads on nails and bolts and similar hardware products so a wire or a bar of uh, stock is fed into machine and then is headed into into in and the end is headed meaning the we, we deform to the shape of the head and then the final piece is cut into a quarter length and for bolts and screws uh, we use thread rolling okay to to perform the 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 thread the end of the the screws and bolts Okay, so so this is an example of heading. Okay, you have the the blank here, okay, and the and the die, and then the punch. Uh, so the punch pushes uh, inwards into the into the die, and then performing the shape of this head. Okay, and then the knockout pin afterwards is uh, pushed outwards as the as, uh, on the head, and then uh, removing the 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 product from the from the die. Okay. So, uh, so you have uh, uh, this part, this diagram showing the sequence of operation okay, uh, to produce a, uh, a bolt head, for example. Initially, you have uh, uh, this the initial dimension at 147 mm in length, and uh, the workpiece is at 38 mm in diameter. And then, uh, when the first stroke, okay, the they deform at this shape, and then finally, when we uh, according to the the punch itself. Which controls and also at the end with the with the die shape, so you can have the the final dimension, which is about 140 114 millimeter in length, uh, the, uh, between the head and the end and the end, and the diameter is 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 uh, reduced to 34 millimeter, and the head is shaped 63 uh, mm. If you calculate the the volume uh, at this the at the first uh, diagram. If you calculate this volume and this volume will remain the same okay, you don't remove any uh, material excess material because the the process is is uh, is is accurate okay you you already produce according to the shape that you want uh, and you already know how much uh, volume that you need to produce the final dimension okay uh, another process of forging is cogging also uh, called drawing out which is basically an uh, an open die forging operation Okay, is the process of reducing the thickness of a bar by successive forging at specific interval. Okay, and uh, this is an example uh, uh, for uh, blacksmith performing okay on a hammer with anvil on hot pieces of metal. So the the blacksmith would start from uh, like for example uh, uh, a dish shape of a of the wood piece. So by uh, hammering okay uh, the wood piece on an anvil. Okay, on, on top of an anvil or a flat uh, flat wood piece okay uh, excuse me for my drawing okay so when when the, the when the when the blacksmith uh, hammer the 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 billet okay of that that starts with the wood piece finally we can have the uh, the for example the, the shape that we did that that is required okay this would be the anvil again apologies for my drawing okay so we get to have the at the final dimension okay and this process actually is is not a a, a, a single uh, applied force a single applied hammer okay to get the final dimension is actually, is actually a, a continuous process uh, at, at, at a specific interval so when once the uh, for example normally this kind of process the billet is very at a very high temperature. Okay, up, um, uh, for example, for mild steel, it can go up to uh, more than seven hundred degrees centigrade. So it's it's very hot, and then move to the anvil, and then the 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 the, the blacksmith would uh, continuously uh, hammer uh, the the billet until it, 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 the the dimension is the, the the thickness is reduced. Okay, but the 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 volume would still remain the same. Is that in that the as as I as I drew here, uh, just this is uh, too exaggerated. This so initially the 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 length would be increased. Okay, 
So this, let's say this is L0 and this is L1. So L1 is much larger okay, compared to L0. But the thickness here, T0 and this would be T1. Okay, So T0 is much, much larger compared to T1. Which we call the process is called uh, cogging or smithing. Okay, so this is it. Okay, you can actually uh, we we actually used uh, even uh, for for machine. Okay, even uh, you can do uh, using a hammer forge. Okay, to continuously hammer the 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 workpiece until the until the the workpiece is deformed according to the dimension that you want. Okay. Another process of forging is uh, that that falls under forging is embossing, which you uh, uh, you apply uh, sort of a shallow or moderate uh, thickness, okay, imprint on the on the uh, on the workpiece, and usually uh, the 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 male uh, and the female uh, die or the up top, uh, the upper and lower uh, die are match between each other, and this is used principally for stiffening of flat panels and for purpose of decoration. So you can, uh, this is an example of your embossing. So you see here, so uh, the, the, uh, it will leave the imprint on the workpiece itself. So then, so you have uh, the, the, the workpiece or the blank being placed between uh, two matching die, okay, to, uh, with a male and female die. And this once uh, once the once two the two dies uh, are forced into each other then then the workpiece would match uh, the the shape or the numbers or the design of the uh, of the die so you can have for example uh, this uh, embossing uh, uh, letters okay on the on the workpiece or embossing uh, shapes uh, design imprint on the on the on the sheet metal uh, also uh, having arts uh, uh, shapes on the uh, design on the on the wood piece. Uh, coining is actually you you uh, as opposed to embossing, which you uh, one piece uh, with the with the matching surface. But for coining, you have those those two surfaces are to, are not the same as uh, both of it. And this is a, a process that usually to mint coins, medallions, and jewelry. Okay, so you, normally this kind of process. The, the upper and lower die are, are not the same which is not which has a different uh, design between each between each other so you have the upper die and the lower die and the holder of the die so once uh, the both die are pressed against each other on the workpiece so then the work, uh, you at the same time you remove the the coin part and you left with the excess work part is when it is later uh, is uh, is removed it's not used so so and then this uh, early on of course uh, this kind of uh, process was open die and later on you know, they used uh, uh, a more uh, uh, sort of a closed die operation uh, and then uh, everything uh, impression die so you can have a better uh, precision uh, better quality uh, 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 again the, this is shown an example of uh, of even a flashless uh, you can even do a flashless uh, uh, forging where you know the, the 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 amount of volume that you need, so you can just imprint on the on the surface. But of course, if you're not if not using uh, uh, flash disk, you can also move to uh, uh, impression die forging, and you can have the the, the shape and then. Uh, but actually, you're not actually uh, changing uh, too much shape. You just want to imprint on the surface of the of the of your workpiece or your blank. So next, I'll be discussing on the defects, uh, uh, forging defects that, that can occur, okay, when we do uh, forging. Next, I'll be talking about forging defects. Uh, so in addition to surface cracking, other defects developed in forging operation are web buckling, uh, lapse formation, internal defects, okay, from the uh, from inside of the of the wood piece itself. So. And also another example of uh, defects in forged parts, this is the laps formed by web buckling. Mm -hmm. okay. 
this is the <coughs> you can see the uh, buckling inside uh, during the forging process and also web thickness can uh, and therefore to in order to avoid this kind of problem we can uh, avoid it by increasing the web thickness Next, uh, some defects uh, that shows uh, during forging. Okay, when the forging begins, when when the die cavities are being filled, some cracks can develop in the ribs, and this crack can propagate to the ribs. Okay, during the uh, during the forging process, and this will uh, will in in the, after the forging process and when you actually uh, when the, the work piece is being taken out okay you can the, the work piece can can fracture easily at the at the ribs okay this is due to the when the the cavities are filled prematurely because of an oversized uh, billet when you uh, when you actually uh, didn't calculate correctly or didn't estimate correctly how much material of the workpiece that you that you need to require for the uh, forging process uh, this normally happens uh, for closed die forging or impression die forging so uh, we're coming to the sort of the end of the part of the lecture so uh, on this part i'll be talking about uh, forging machines and what other types of forging machines that are available to for do for forging process and these machines are generally classified between two types of uh, forging uh, which is uh, presses and hammers okay as i mentioned earlier uh, for presses for press meaning that you're actually applying a gradual and uh, maintaining a constant uh, pressure stress over and force over the workpiece but for hammer you're actually uh, more of a uh, impact load meaning that you uh, apply uh, a single impact load and then the hammer rises again and then you uh, apply another impact uh, load on the wood piece okay so for presses machine we have hydraulic press which are uh, uh, that operate at constant speed and the load are limited okay and this type of press uh, uh, due to the technology advancement so from the early on using uh, history using uh, water uh, to uh, generate to generate uh, the the enough force so this we we are using uh, hydraulic to to transmit the uh, the 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 energy okay from the uh, from the liquid from the hydraulic liquid to the to the press and this can give a constant load throughout the, the stroke to maintain uh, a continuous load on the workpiece so this is a diagram showing on how a uh, hydraulic uh, press uh, forging machine okay you have the hydraulic fluid okay moving uh, coming in and out from the and then applying it on the on the ramp for uh, till to the the workpiece itself this is showing a, an example of a hydraulic press forging machine okay you can see uh, a very large setup okay this is also an example of uh, up to then with this kind of uh, hydraulic press you can apply up to 445 mega newton of force on the on the workpiece next we have a mechanical press so as opposed to uh, hydraulic okay we are using uh, using mechanical means to to generate the energy to so to so that uh, the press uh, apply the load okay in this kind of setup you can imagine uh, on the working of an engine okay where there's uh, using a crank uh, movable parts and also uh, a flywheel to maintain the the constant uh, kinetic energy that requires for the mechanical press okay 
so this is a setup okay you have a flywheel that uh, the rotates to generate the 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 constant uh, kinetic energy and you have the eccentric shaft this eccentric shaft can also be replaced by a crankshaft okay to provide uh, that can give the up and down motion of the ram and in this kind of setup uh, you you have uh, you can also uh, make for the for the uh, applying for the load on the workpiece and normally with this kind of uh, mechanical press forging uh, it can uh, it will be it's it doesn't have that that uh, it's not very costly when compared to hydraulic press whereas uh, hydraulic press you have a very you can have a very high uh, load uh, setup but for mechanical press drive you, uh, the the highest can go up to 200 plus mega newton uh, but again it, 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 uh, the the cost of the setup machine is not very high compared to hydraulic press and this is an example of a mechanical press which much it can be much smaller compared to uh, compared to the uh, hydraulic press and uh, the, the the production can be very fast okay, it can make uh, uh, not the, the workpiece not very uh, large compared to hydraulic press whereas hydraulic press you can create very large uh, forge products okay another type of mechanical press is a knuckle joint and this is by a linkage design so you can imagine uh, the movement of a, of a, of a crank uh, gear okay so this is uh, the design okay this is the, the diagram okay the, the the motion of the knuckle joint provides the 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 necessary uh, constant energy to um, to generate the, the the load as opposed to uh, 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 using a mechanical press using a flywheel uh, this knuckle joint okay ensures also uh, a constant uh, rotating motion that, that that can supply the kinetic energy to the ram uh, and as the as the press uh, on the workpiece okay for and you can have if for with uh, with a uh, knuckle joint you can also design a very large or even a small machine okay so and this is an examples of some examples of a uh, knuckle joint uh, press forging okay uh, and you can also uh, and with uh, with a knuckle joint press actually the it has a very uh, wide range of of a uh, force that you can uh, that can design it can be easily uh, it can be easily uh, set up uh, to uh, it then does require a uh, very large uh, uh, very difficult setup as, a, as compared to even uh, mechanical or even uh, hydraulic press next is a screw press and the screw press is a uh, sort of the same as as the mechanical press uh, you, you still derive the energy from from a flywheel and the forging load is transmitted using a vertical screw so uh, and the ram would stop as the flywheel uh, energy dissipates so you can imagine the movement of the of the screw press is 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 as as uh, uh, turning okay as turning for a for a churn or turning for a, a screw okay as you apply the load Okay, and as 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 the, the screw finish uh, into the your workpiece, so then the the motion stops. So, and uh, screw presses also have very good uh, capacity range from as small as uh, 1.4 mega newton to 280 mega newton, around the same range as as as, uh, as the knuckle joint. So you can have a very wide range of products. Uh, small even up to uh, 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 medium-sized products they can can uh, manufacture this is a diagram showing uh, the motion of the screw and also flywheel and this even the knuckle joint uh, mechanical and even uh, screw all these three machines not necessarily uh, motion is is a manual but it can be uh, by turned by uh, nowadays by electric okay or uh, that can help to generate the, the enough energy to, to provide the motion and the uh, kinetic energy to move the uh, the, the forging hammer 
and this is another example of modern uh, screw press forging so you can see this is the screw top of the on top of the of the machine that provides the the <coughs> that provides the energy to, to move the, the the ram so uh, next uh, another forging machine is a hammer type okay this kind of type is is quite an old uh, uh, quite an uh, old uh, uh, method of uh, of forging as i mentioned earlier in the lecture that this kind of machine uh, utilizes the, the the principle of forging itself in the early days where a blacksmith hammers the the workpiece okay and now this modern more modern uh, industrial application uses this uh, press forging uh, because it can give a, a, a sustainable uh, a constant load on the, on the workpiece for whereas hammer you need to derive the kinetic energy from the potential energy of the ram and some uh, uh, some operations actually they use uh, the hammer um, even from gravity okay but uh, again uh, the, still there's some usage uh, some application but not so but the the because of uh, the current demand for in, uh, for production rate, nobody uh, hammer machine hammer forging are uh, uh, used for uh, for not for very high uh, production rate. It is commonly used for impression die forging or closed die forging because you only need to press on the on the uh, apply the impact load on the workpiece or the billet on the on the closed die and to make the the, the workpiece formed. Okay. And, and what the, the advantage is that it uh, uh, the because of the high uh, speed of the impact, okay, you can uh, you can have a, a low forming time and minimizing the cooling of the hot forging. So the necess not necessarily the you have to uh, let uh, you don't have you know you don't have to have a lot of a longer time to cool your workpiece. And also, since with the low cooling rate, you can forge very uh, complex uh, shape. So, um, so that's all uh, from uh, from this lecture today. So I hope you gain uh, some insight on the forging process. So if you have any uh, questions, you can uh, ask in the comments or uh, ask in our group uh, chat in uh, Microsoft Teams or WhatsApp. So thank you very much for your attention and have a great day.